Hello, this is Anne de Guest and it's June 26, 2022. It is a quick update about the new variants BA4 and 5 taking over BA2. So, I know you're all tired to hear more about Omicron and I have to say me too, but I think there's some really important updates are hanging there. On the good news, uh, COVID vaccine have shown to have saved over 20 million lives in the first 12 months after they have been released. Pfizer has been approved for the six months to five year old population. Moderna is working on a new bivalent vaccine that will provide better Omicron protection. Omicron seems to provide a lower risk of long COVID versus Delta. The bad news is we're totally blind in the US on the actual COVID incidence. So now we need to look at wastewater and positivity rate and as well as hospitalization rate, which are all very late stage. Omicron um, BA4 and 5, unfortunately, have a higher viral load and are more infectious, so we see a, a tidal wave of reinfection and breakthrough cases. And unfortunately, Paxlovid seems to be only helpful for, all, for older patients at severe risk, as opposed to uh, the people at standard risk or younger population. On the ugly side, BA4 and 5 is showing that they are evading most of the antibodies protection from vaccine or prior infection. And unfortunately, the data just came out that multiple reinfection have a stepwise increase in mortality risk for all causes at one in six months. So we'll spend some time on that. A quick disclosure, I'm not a doctor. This is, uh, I'm just taking data that has been published in reliable medical journals there to help you make better informed decisions for you and your family. So let's take a look at what's happening with all these variants. This is uh, where the incubator is, which is South Africa. And you can see that the rise of BA4 and BA5 is faster, which is hard to believe, uh, than some of the prior rise. So we are in for another ride, I'm afraid. And if you can see the percent of the positive test, and it's pretty clear that in South Africa, pretty much everybody has had multiple infection now. You can see, we see that same very fast rise of the positivity rate with BA4 and BA5 will be on the daily or the average seven days. So kind of really similar pattern here. Uh, what's happening in Europe? Unfortunately, South Africa, as you know, is always the leading indicator of these variants there. And then it quickly moved to Europe, to Portugal, which is totally now dominant of BA4 and BA5. Uh, UK is also rising. Austria is pretty much all the cases there. I have a, several, a couple of friends who unfortunately uh, spent like 15 minutes in a gondola in Austria without a mask and bada boom, they got the, unfortunately, the COVID. Netherlands and France, US is a bit of a laggard. It's always one or two months behind Europe. So we really need to increase our awareness in the US. Don't, don't, don't think the thing it is over, unfortunately, there. So why is this a worry? BA4 and 5 have unique new mutation in green. You can see them at the bottom there. And unfortunately, they have two impact, which is like Darwin law. They always go in one direction, higher infection rate, high viral load, and avoiding the antibodies. And why is that worrisome? Because it has, it decreased by 21x the protection that you get from your vaccination from the original uh, alpha uh, COVID. If you have never been infected there, you have a 21% lower protection if you have been vaccinated. If you had a prior BA1 or 2 Omicron, you still have a drop of 19x. So I'm trying to reemphasize what that means. It means that you're not protected if you had BA1 and BA2, which I think a good 60% of Americans got one of these variant in the last few months, and you are at risk, despite the antibodies you've built, to pick up BA4 and 5. And, and you can see the magnitude of the drop of the antibody titer, which is the amount of antibody you have, who are activated by the BA4 and 5. You can see it's a significant drop if you'd been vaccinated and never got infected, or if you were infected and vaccinated there. So you are not protected, uh, and you can catch again BA4 and 5. Now, on the good news side, 20 million people have had their lives saved by the vaccine. This is a, a data that just came back from the Lancet, and, and it also showed that the biggest impact was in high-income country, where, of course, we had the highest vaccination rate versus the low income, which you can barely see in yellow at the bottom of the graphic there. So the vaccine really saved us from the COVID being destructive. Now, other good news, Moderna bivalent updated booster is coming in the fall, and the data is just coming up with the first results that it's improved by a factor of 6x 
the neutralizing titers. But unfortunately, you remember the the BA4 is dropping by 20 x your antibody, so I, it's better, but it's not exactly uh, a cure uh, for BA4 and BA5. The other issue there is what would be the FDA process. But then I try to release it in the fall. Uh, FDA is having some meetings to decide what their process will be. So. Hopefully, uh, they'll step up uh, on this process. Uh, on mixed news, Paxlovid, uh, which has been a drug approved by Pfizer to be taken with Omicron, was authorized if you take it within the first five days after you develop mild to moderate symptoms. It's authorized for people over the age of 12 years old. And it's really showing to decrease by 80 to 90% the risk of being hospitalized or to have a severe uh, uh, COVID. Unfortunately, a uh, couple of things have come up. There's a rebound, which can happen within two to eight days. It's less than 1% of the cases, but these are people who test positive, they take Paxlovid, test negative, and then after five days, they test positive again, which means they could still be contagious. The other big news that came out uh, in the last week is that it doesn't seem to be effective as a, a prophylactic, i.e. to take it if you think you're going to be exposed, it doesn't change the risk of infection, and it doesn't seem to impact people who are standard risk patients, i.e. young people or people who don't have high risk for severe uh, COVID. And these are two studies that have come out, one from Pfizer showing it had a 51% risk reduction, which is like flipping a coin, so it was not significant. And another study from Israel showed that it did lower hospitalization for all the patients, but was ineffective in helping younger population there. So as a result of that, uh, you may find out it's going to be harder for you to get a prescription unless you are at risk of a severe COVID. Reinfection risk, this is really important. I'm really gonna spend my time on this one. This data just came out looking at 5 million pe people as a control were uninfected, were matched with 250,000 people were infected, and out of that, 39,000 got two infection. What they find out, and this is a big graphic here, is that those people double their mortality risk at one month and six months and triple the hospitalization risk for all other causes than COVID. So what it clearly shows is that that population there, which is separate from the long COVID situation there, is that after you've had COVID, and although you may think you had minor flu symptoms, it drastically increases your risk of developing other type of diseases. And remember, in healthcare, we get excited with anything that has a risk ratio over one. One is being the average versus the population of your age group. And what it's showing here is that we see a risk ratio of 2 and 3x, which is really, really significant there for people developing diabetes. And there's been a 40% increase in diabetes in one year. For people developing cardiovascular events, uh, higher hospitalizations for other events there. So let's take a deeper dive on this because this is really worrisome. And what they've shown is that one month, the first 30 days, is when you're the highest risk, which does make sense because your immune system has been taxed. And as a result of that, you know, you're at a higher risk of picking up another, another disease or, or, or another event and your body not be able to fight a good, a good fight against it. The bad news is that it's still lingering at six months. Now, remember, everything about the 1x is a higher risk ratio. And it's across all category, cardiovascular, uh, risk of blood, uh, blood clots, diabetes, chronic fatigue, gastrointestinal. So uh, unfortunately, this is not the flu. I just want to emphasize that a lot of my friends are getting, unfortunately, Omicron, and they have a couple of weeks there, but you are at risk, and you really need to take it easy after you get COVID just to allow your immune system to bounce back. This is the one that really got my attention. If you have multiple reinfection, which unfortunately, uh, people could have had the Wuhan virus uh, two years ago and got Omicron in the surge and unfortunately BA4, uh, it may expose a lot of the population to be reinfected again. And so if you have had a multiple uh, infection, green is one, red is two, and purple is three, you can see how much it increases your hazard ratio. And remember, uh, you know, we usually get excited at 1.2, 1.5. We're talking at 3x here is in the middle there. We even have some cases where people get uh, infected two or three times. So it's close to 6x, especially for pulmonary. Pulmonary embolism is kind of a major risk there. Uh, but it's kidney uh, functions, chronic fatigue, blood clots. So um, I think this is something we're going to learn more that, unfortunately, uh, it increases 
uh, uh, the burden on your body there and therefore in the decrease your immune, your immune system response and puts you at higher risk of having other type of complication after you had uh, the initial COVID. So let's talk about long COVID. You know, I've been talking about this for over a year now. The U.S. has finally come out to say there's probably between 8 to 23 million Americans who have developed COVID. It's defined for people who have lasting symptoms after four weeks. The number one is brain-related symptoms, headache, brain fog, cognitive impairment. Some people have strokes due to the blood clots. People still have lost their, their sense of taste and smell lungs, shortness of breath, literally pain, breathing, heart, you know, there's a, what's called cardiomyopathy, which is inflammation of the heart, which can lead to heart attack and heart failure. Uh, and this is 20 to 40 years old. This is not for the elderly. And skin, you know, bruising, rashes, and, and also damage to the kidneys. Now, we're still trying to figure out the causes. You know, people are starting to look at really four aspects. One is the autoimmune system is overreacting and underreacting, and therefore, allowing some uh, old persistent virus to basically come back and then take over the body. There's clearly organ damage during the acute part of the infection that can create long-term problem. And there's these microclots uh, that can be uh, creating organ damage all throughout the body there. It's unfortunately the virus has been shown to be uh, found at six to 12 months in multiple parts of the body, the brain, uh, sexual organs, the kidneys, everywhere there. So it does show that the virus is not being cleared by that population there. So I really urge you that after you basically test negative, that only means there's no RNA in your nose. That doesn't mean your body has cleared the, the, the virus from your body there. So be very gentle with yourself and really help your immune system clear the virus over two to four weeks. The risk of long COVID, uh, the CDC has just pushed a new report saying that one in five adults will develop the condition there. There's a two times higher risk of developing pulmonary embolies, which could be fatal, so it's very dangerous. There's a 25% risk for people of the age of 65. And this was based on the data set of, of the uh, medical record from Cerner, which is one of the biggest medical uh, record company in the U.S., with 63 million adults in 2020. So it's a very, very, very credible data set. Long COVID is real. If you're over 65, you have a 25% risk of developing it based on data there. So some good news is Omicron seems to provide a lower risk of developing long COVID at Delta. This just came out in the Lancet. It's really very interesting paper. And what it shows is that uh, the risk of developing long COVID if you have Omicron is only 4 to 5% versus Delta was 10% in their data set. Uh, and this is what's really surprising to me a little bit there is that the longer you have had the vaccine, the lower the risk. And if you're older, you can see the risk is 75% longer, which does tie to some of the numbers we have seen which people got diagnosed with long COVID, which is the 20 to 40 years old, uh, who basically were not vaccinated or didn't have all the booster shots. So again, I want to reemphasize a takeaway, which is, if you're uh, vaccinated and boosted over the age of 60, you may have a 75% lower risk of developing long COVID from Omicron than where it was over a year ago. And if you're not, if you're younger, don't assume you're uh, invincible, really get your booster because it has a, a huge impact in decreasing your risk of long COVID. So if people really want to look, you, the, the paper has a lot of information there. Again, I go back to my risk ratio of one and you can see across the board, uh, these people between 18 to 64 years old uh, are developing uh, those conditions there. So let's take a quick summary of what's happening in the U.S. Unfortunately, we have no idea what's happening in the U.S. And that's because the cases are no longer reliable. What's reported is PCR. And as you know, most people that I know around me have got the test at home and they basically took care of themselves for one or two weeks and it was never reported. Uh, the CDC estimated it could be underreported by 5 to 10x. So we have honestly <laughs> no idea of the real case rate. So what to do about it? Well, uh, we know when we do P when we do some genetic testing there that unfortunately BA4 and BA5 are on the rise. I've shown you that earlier. It's already at 35%. I suspect next time I talk to you in the, in the months, it's probably gonna be the variant uh, that controls the US. And uh, if we look at wastewater, and I just picked San Diego as an example of it, uh, you can see that BA4, which is orange, and BA5, which is more dominant there, is already at, at around 
probably what I can say here, 45% uh, of the cases, they're growing very rapidly. So it's going to be dominant. And the wastewater is the first indicator because as we know, the, the RNA is staying in the poop for a long period of time and, and can be detected in the waste, wastewater treatment plants. Another thing to look at is the positivity rate, and except for Vermont, that pretty much every other state in the country are above the 5%, which is the numbers we're trying to stay below. And you can see a lot of them are pretty high up, you know, 10, 20% there. So we have a lot of high risk uh, community transmission. BA drive as a result of that uh, is driving hospitalization. You can see there's a clear correlation between the rise of hospitalization and the rise of BA4 and BA5. So stay tuned on that one. So uh, I'll provide this quick update just because I thought there was some really interesting information. Please, please, please uh, be still careful. Use common sense. People are starting to reimpose restriction and mask indoors. I mean, I think that's a good thing. So try to be careful while you're traveling. A lot of my friends caught uh, the virus you know, while traveling in Europe. Uh, so, so you, you know, this BA4 and 5 is starting to be the dominant, is extremely contagious, and don't assume you're vaccinated and that you're protected against it. Unfortunately, it's a very, very uh, infectious disease. So stay healthy, and hopefully I don't have to see you anymore, but unfortunately I suspect I'm going to be back in a month. So please help me uh, post this to your network. Uh, uh, I'm trying to, this is a labor of love on my side, I'm trying to get people educated so they can make better informed decisions. Thank you and take care.